Croydon Airport was the UK's only international airport during the interwar period. Located in Croydon, Surrey, England, it opened in 1920, built in a neoclassical style, and was developed as Britain's main airport, handling more cargo, mail, and passengers than any other UK airport at the time. Innovations at the site included the world's first air traffic control and the first airport terminal. During World War II the airport was named RAF Croydon as its role changed to that of a fighter airfield during the Battle of Britain, and in 1943 RAF Transport Command was founded at the site, which used the airport to transport thousands of troops into and out of Europe. After the Second World War, its role returned to civil aviation, but the role of London's primary international airport passed to London Heathrow Airport. Croydon Airport closed in 1959. It had been known under eight different names while it was active. In 1978, the terminal building and gate lodge were granted protection as Grade II listed buildings. In May 2017, Historic England raised the status of the terminal building to Grade II. Owing to disrepair, the gate lodge is now classified as heritage at risk by Historic England. Area around Croydon Airport as it was in the 1920s or 1930s in December 1915, Beddington Aerodrome was established, one of a number of small airfields around London that were created for protection against Zeppelin airship raids during the First World War. In January 1916, the first two aircraft, B.E.2CS, arrived at the aerodrome as part of home defense. Watton Aerodrome opened in 1918 as part of the adjoining National Aircraft Factory No. 1, to serve aircraft test flights. The two airfields were on each side of Plough Lane, Beddington to the west and Wadden to the east. Beddington Aerodrome became a large reserve aircraft and training aerodrome for the Royal Flying Corps. After the end of the First World War the aerodrome became an important training airfield for the newly formed Royal Air Force. During 1919, Prince Albert gained his wings here with no. 29 Training Squadron, the first member of the Royal Family to learn to fly. His elder brother, the Prince of Wales, also received flying training with no. 29 Training Squadron at Beddington during 1919. Beddington and Wadden Aerodromes were combined to become Croydon Aerodrome, the gateway for all international flights to and from London. The new, single aerodrome opened on March 29, 1920, replacing the temporary civil aerodrome at a cavalry ground on Hounslow Heath. Plough Lane remained a public road crossing the site. Road traffic was halted when necessary, first by a man with a red flag and later by a gate. The aerodrome stimulated a growth in regular scheduled flights carrying passengers, mail and freight, the first destinations being Paris, Amsterdam, and Rotterdam. Two flights daily from Paris were scheduled for ease of communication with London during the Paris Peace Conference. In 1923, flights to Berlin Tempelhof Airport began. Penshurst Airfield was an alternative destination for airliners when Croydon was closed on account of fog. One such diversion was on September 24, 1921, when a de Havilland DH.18 aircraft was diverted to Penshurst. This situation lasted until Penshurst closed on July 28, 1936. Croydon was the first airport in the world to introduce air traffic control, a control tower, and radio position fixing procedures. The Aerodrome Control Tower, 15 feet high with windows on all four sides, was commissioned on February 25, 1920 and provided basic traffic, weather and location information to pilots. On the formation of Britain's first national airline, Imperial Airways, on March 31, 1924, Croydon became the new airline's operating base. Imperial Airways was the British government's chosen instrument to develop connections with the UK's extensive overseas interests. It was therefore from Croydon that Britain first developed its European and long-haul routes to India, Africa, the Middle and Far East, Asia and Africa and Australia. Following the Imperial Airways de Havilland DH.34 crash of December 1924, Britain's first major civil aviation accident, conditions at Croydon came under criticism from the public inquiry that investigated the causes. The inquiry was Britain's first into an aviation accident which led to an act of Parliament, the Croydon Aerodrome Extension Act 1925. The Croydon Aerodrome Extension Act led to large-scale expansion, redevelopment and construction of an improved new airport with airport buildings constructed adjacent to the Purley Way, Croydon. Aerial view of Croydon Airport in 1925 Unsuccessful forced deportation of Jewish refugees at Croydon Airport, March 30, 1939 Under the provisions of the Croydon Aerodrome Extension Act 1925, the airport was greatly enlarged between 1926 and 1928. With a new complex of buildings being constructed alongside Purley Way, 
including the first purpose-designed airport terminal and air traffic control tower, the world's first airport hotel, and extensive hangars. The development cost £267,000. Plough Lane was closed permanently to let heavier airliners land and depart safely. The airport's terminal building and control tower were completed in 1928, and the old wooden air traffic control and customs building demolished. The new buildings and layout began operations on January 20, 1928, and were officially opened on May 2, 1928 by Lady Maud Hoare. Croydon was where regular international passenger services began, initially using converted wartime bombers, and the croydon Le Bourget route soon became the busiest in the world. Air traffic control was first developed here, as was the Mayday distress call. Amy Johnson took off from Croydon on May 5, 1930 for her record-breaking flight to Australia. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh arrived in Spirit of Street. Louis, to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of over 100,000 people. Winston Churchill also took flying lessons. On the morning of July 11, 1936, Major Hugh Pollard and Cecil Bebb left Croydon Airport for the Canary Islands in a de Havilland Dragon repeat aircraft. Where they picked up General Francisco Franco, taking him to Spanish Morocco and thereby helping to trigger the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War. Imperial Airways used the Handley Page HP 42 HP 45 4 engine biplanes from Croydon, and the Armstrong Whitworth Atalanta, which was the first monoplane airliner used by the airline, intended for use on the African routes. In March 1937, British Airways Limited operated from Croydon, moving to Heston Aerodrome in May 1938. Imperial Airways, serving routes in the British Empire, and British Airways Limited, serving European routes, were merged by the Chamberlain government in November 1938 to become British Overseas Airways Corporation. Larger four-engine monoplanes, Armstrong Whitworth Ensign Series came into service that year. The airport also hosted a much-publicized visit by Gertrude schultz Klink, leader of the National Socialist Women's League. And rumored to be a spy, historians have speculated that she landed in Britain to cultivate German spies living here. In the run-up to World War II, when the Second World War started in September 1939, Croydon Airport was closed to civil aviation but played a vital role as a fighter station during the Battle of Britain. No. 92 Squadron flew Supermarine Spitfires from RAF Croydon during the early part of the Second World War and the Battle of Britain. On August 15, 1940, Croydon Airport was attacked in the first major air raid on the London area. At around 6. 20 p.m. 22 BF-110 and BF-109 fighter bombers of EPP. GR. 210 mounted a final raid of the day, intended for RAF Kenley nearby, but attacked Croydon in error. The armory was destroyed, the civilian airport terminal building was badly damaged, and a hangar was damaged by cannon fire and blast. Another hangar and about 40 training aircraft in it went up in flames. Six airfield personnel died. Factories next to Croydon Airport took the worst of the bombing. The British NSF factory was almost entirely destroyed, and the bourgeois perfume factory gutted. The Rolison aircraft factory also received bomb hits and accounted for many of the 62 civilians killed and 192 injured. Eight of the attacking aircraft were shot down by the hurricanes of 32 and 111 squadrons. Croydon became the base of RAF Transport Command in 1944. Aerial photograph of Croydon Airport in 1945 following the end of the war, it was realized that post-war airliners and cargo aircraft would be larger and that air traffic would intensify. The urban spread of South London and the growth of surrounding villages had enclosed Croydon Airport, and left it little room for expansion. Heathrow was therefore designated as London's airport. Croydon returned to civil control in February 1946, a diagram in the issue of Flight Magazine dated 11th of April shows 1,250 yards ground run in the 170 to 350 direction. 1,150 yards 060 to 240 and 1,100 yards 120 to 300. Northolt opened to the airline soon after that, cutting Croydon's traffic, but the September 1946 ABC guide shows 218 departures a week to Belfast, Dublin, Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow, Jersey, Guernsey, and several continental airports. A year later there were 56 departures a week, mostly BEA to Haviland Dragon repeats that weeks later left Croydon for good. It was decided in 1952 that the airport would eventually be closed, as Blackbush Airport in Hampshire and Northolt Aerodrome in Middlesex could accommodate European flights during the 1950s. The last scheduled flight from Croydon departed at 6.15pm on September 30, 1959, 
followed by the last aircraft, at 7.45 p.m., the airfield officially closed at 10.20 p.m. On September 27, 2009, to mark the 50th anniversary of the closing of the airport, 11 light aircraft, including 8 biplanes, staged a flypast. A gold laurel leaf tribute was laid in the control tower to mark the anniversary. The de Havilland Heron outside Airport House RAF Battle of Britain Memorial Much of the site has been built over, but some of the terminal buildings near Purley Way are still visible, clearly identifiable as to their former purpose. The former terminal building is called Airport House, and the former control tower houses a visitor center. A de Havilland Heron is displayed on the forecourt outside Airport House, mounted on struts. The Heron is painted to represent an example registered GA Oxlove Morton Air Services, the aircraft that flew the last passenger flight from Croydon on September 30, 1959. A memorial to those lost in the Battle of Britain stands slightly to the south. Although Croydon has long ceased operation, the two cut ends of Plough Lane have never been reunited, but the area between has been developed instead into parkland. Playing fields, and the Roundshaw residential estate with its roads aptly named after aviators and aircraft. All that remains of the runways is a small area of tarmac about 400 feet long each way in Roundshaw Park just west of Purley Way. Which is a remnant of the WNWSA runway due south of the control buildings. It can be seen at 51 degrees 2104 N0 degrees 0703 W, Wahid we home soon. 351067 degrees north 0. 117449 degrees W, 51. 351067, minus 0. 117,449, the arm may be a remnant of a taxiway to Hangar B. The area is used primarily by walkers, model aircraft enthusiasts, locals playing football and the Croydon Pirates baseball team. The church on the Roundshaw estate has a cross on its outside wall that was made from the cut-down propeller of a Spitfire based at Croydon during the Second World War. The area is still known as Croydon Airport for transport purposes and was the location for Croydon Water Palace. In recognition of the historical significance of the aerodrome, two local schools merged in September 2010 and became the Aerodrome School. The Aerodrome Hotel and the terminal building including its Grand Booking Hall were built in the neoclassical geometrical design typical of the early 20th century. A further item that would have caught the eye of visitor and traveler alike was the time zone tower in the booking hall with its dials depicting the times in different parts of the world. Croydon Airport's Aerodrome Hotel is part of Croydon Vision 2020 Regeneration Plan. World with wing symbol, still on wall in booking hall the airport hotel survives as the independent hallmark hotel. The chief immigration officer of the shipping port of Port of Dover, P. L. Hartley, took over in 1936. A medical officer, Dr. John Robert Draper, M.B., B., C.H., was employed by Croydon Council to take over medical duties at the airport from January 1, 1931. He was answerable to Croydon's Medical Officer of Health. Following the Public Health Regulations 1938, his role changed significantly. Croydon Airport features heavily in two detective novels, Freeman Wills Crofts the Twelve. Thirty from Croydon and Agatha Christie's Death in the Clouds. It is also mentioned in Evelyn Waugh's labels, A Mediterranean Journey, Elizabeth Bowen's To the North and Winston Churchill's Thoughts and Adventures. W. H. Auden, in his letter to Lord Byron, lists Croydon Aerodrome as one of the locations visited by a modern-day Don Juan. Thanks for watching.